Welcome to video number 19 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In this tutorial we look at the various speed measurement methods that can be used in iTrain. The speed measurement feature is opened by going up to the view menu, then down to speed measurements and then click on locomotive. And we're going to be talking about the three methods shown in the type drop down here. The device type is a commercial product which is specially made to measure speed. They often consist of two sensors shown here and here which are 10 centimeters apart and lie parallel with the actual track and they automatically measure the speed and send the value to iTrain. This is only one example of a number of different types of commercial units that you can purchase specifically for measuring the speeds of your locos. The iTrain user manual gives a list of the commercial units that it supports. The next method is called two feedbacks. It uses two short sections of track with a feedback sensor in each section and a section of unmonitored track in between such as a turnout as shown here. The measurement uses the length of the first activated feedback, say FB1 in this example, plus the distance between the two sections, which would be the length of the turnout here. So one measurement would start when FB1 is activated and would finish when FB2 is activated. The locomotive continues to run until FB2 is released and then it's ready for the next measurement in the other direction, starting at feedback 2 and ending when it gets to feedback 1. The distance from 1 to 2 is the length of feedback 1 plus the distance of the track between the two sections, so the length of the turnout at 20 centimetres. So here the distance from 1 to 2 would be 75 plus 20 which is 95 centimetres. And the distance from 2 to 1 would be the length of feedback 2 plus the length of the track between the two sections. So in this example here we'd have 98 plus 20 which is 118 centimeters. The third method you can use is called center feedback with side feedbacks and this is the method you will see used in Ian's video. It consists of three feedbacks next to each other and you can have non-detected sections between the feedbacks. The main measurement is along the centre feedback called C. If the train is travelling from right to left, the first measurement will start when feedback C is activated and then the measurement will finish when feedback 1 is activated. The loco then drives on until C is released and then it's ready for the next measurement. And moving from left to right this time, the measurement will start when feedback C is activated and the measurement will finish when feedback 2 is activated. When you fill in the measurement called distance from C to 1, you're measuring the distance or the length of C plus the distance between C and FB1. In this case, 
there is no distance, it's zero. So the value here will just be the length of C, which is 75. And the same goes for the distance from C to 2. So it's measured as the length of C plus the distance between C and FB2. And again, it is zero distance between the two. So the value that you enter here is just the length of C, 75 centimetres. And here we show another example where we do have a distance between two of the feedbacks here, between C and FB1. So here, the distance from C to 1 will be the length of C plus the distance between C and 1. So it's 75 plus 13, 88 centimetres. And on this side, again, because there's no distance between the two, that would just be the length of C, which is 75. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.